Welcome to CSEP Biology TCP. Today we're looking at our exam prep for the May-June Human and Social Biology examination. We're looking at question three from the January 2024 paper. And the first question required of us to define the term photosynthesis. And of course, photosynthesis is pretty much a process in which plants convert simple inorganic materials such as, of course, water, and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. And of course, it uses the energy from the sun, which is of course trapped by chlorophyll. Secondly, it wants us to write a chemical equation for photosynthesis. If you are using the old textbook, this is not in the old textbook because this is just required of us from the new syllabus. It's 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Um, in the present, the condition there being sunlight being trapped by the chlorophyll using color to show the sunlight and chlorophyll. The product, of course, is going to be C6H12O6 plus 6 oxygen. For those persons who are not familiar with chemistry, they might be wondering what all these numbers are, what they represent. So what we're supposed to have, we're supposed to have the same number of the element on this side and the same on this side. So if you were supposed to balance, can I just balance for one? Uh, we have six molecules of carbon here. Uh, we have six here right so somebody's wondering about the hydrogen the hydrogen is 12 two sixes 12 so we have 12 on both sides and if we were supposed to look at the uh, oxygen two sixes 12 plus six that's 18 on this side and let us see what's happening here six two sixes 12 18 on this side so the equation is balanced so a chemical equation is usually balanced identify the site in the cell of a plant at which photosynthesis occurs. Now, photosynthesis takes place pretty much in the chloroplast of the plant cell. And of course, that's only going to be in our plant cell. Name the pigment necessary for photosynthesis to occur in plant cell. Of course, that's going to be, of course, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is going to trap that uh, light energy. And of course, magnesium is going to be needed for the plant to be successful at that. Now, due to forest fire in the Amazon, many species of plants are being depleted. Outline two ways in which a reduction in the plant population could have a negative effect on human. There are many ways, but it asks for two. So first, we're going to be looking at the food supply, bearing in mind that we're a part of a food web. So we either direct, depend on plant directly or indirectly. Now, human depend on plant for food directly or indirectly. With a reduced number of plants, it leads to reduce, of course, food supply. And it might not be directly for the uh, human, but what about the herbivores along the food chain? thus affecting the food security so if we have a reduction in plants then we're going to be having a reduction in of course food supply which of course at some part of the food chain will affect our food security plants also remove carbon dioxide from the environment hence with less plants more carbon dioxide will be in the air now this of course will acidify our water bodies will kill some organism and again the food chain will be affected it will also have adverse effect on health of animals and possibly human. All right, you know that if the environment becomes the air is acidified, then you're going to be having red eyes, itchy water, watery eyes, that sort of a stuff. If water is too acidic, then it's going to cause lesion on aquatic animals. The availability of oxygen in the air will also be reduced as a result of less plants so we want to make sure that if we are removing plants we are replacing them we also use plants for raw material uh to make products and if plants are out then we're going to be losing raw material for some product we're going to be losing medicine and so on uh, so then we understand that's very very important for us to have our plants explain how one named human activity may result in an accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's going to be easy. We're looking at a carbon cycle here. It's a burning of fossil fuel uh, will, of course, lead to an accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, this is as a result of the trapped carbon being released in the air during combustion 
of fossil fuel. So this increase in the carbon in the air is as a result of trapped carbon uh, being released during combustion of a fossil fuel into the air. Now, here we are asked to suggest three effects of global warming on Earth. The effects are many, and I just chose to toss a couple on the paper. But of course, in your exam, just do three. Don't try to write four. So you are going to have a flooding of coastal plains. You are going to have melting of ice caps, loss of some species as they can't tolerate the change in weather condition. Or weather. And of course, you're going to have unpredictable weather pattern. You're going to have increased drought. And of course, new pests will turn up in areas that usually they are not. Because now this area forms a favorable condition that is pretty much more hospitable to that pest. So you're going to be finding them in this area. That brings us to the end of question number three. You want to follow for more as we try to cover the entire paper in little snippets. Until we next meet, remember, study to show thyself approved.